Alright guys, we're going to get started. So uh, we know some other people are going to be coming in. Uh, we want to make the most um, of our time together. So I want to open us up in a word of prayer, and then I've got about five or ten minute kind of introduction thing, and then we'll we'll go from there. Okay? So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the opportunity that you allow us to gather as a church. Father, we thank you for this place that you've provided, this physical space. And Father, as we've gathered tonight to talk about uh, some different things and some things that can be controversial and some things that can be emotional for all kinds of different reasons. Father, we just want to take the moment here at the beginning and, and give that all to you. Father, we know that you love us. We know that you're not a God of confusion. We also know that we have an enemy. And we know that he's trying to trip us up in every way possible. Father, we also know that your scripture tells us that the worst kind of an enemy is the one that seems like it's not an enemy. And Father, we just we ask that you would give us the ability to hear uh, with the kinds of hear, the ears and to hear with the kind of heart what it is you want for us individually to take away from our time together. And we'll be careful to give you the glory and the honor for everything that takes place. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, you obviously know what we're talking about, and that's why a lot of you are, are here tonight. And um, our goal is to, to spend this week and next week uh, talking about this topic, but we're not going to rush it. Uh, if we don't get finished uh, Easter week, we're having a special worship service here on Thursday night where we're doing communion and some different things that you're going to be hearing about on Sunday. Uh, we would come back the... The week after that, well, I guess it's the second um, Wednesday in April, uh, if, if we need to finish it up, if we don't get in, in the next couple of weeks. So I've got some opening things that, that I want to say, uh, and then we're, we're going to go from there. Um, by the way, this is Jim Schultz. Many of you know who Jim is. Jim's going to help me out tonight. Uh, so let me just start with that, help me out tonight. I know that there are some of you that are sitting out there who have a lot more knowledge of the Mormon church and the things that go on in the Mormon church than I do or maybe even Jim does. Uh, I, I don't know a lot about the Mormons. The, the Mormons are uh, a different thing for me. Um, but I've learned more and more about that as I've moved, moved west and, and been here. And maybe some of you are in that situation as well. Uh, here, here's how I want to start off. Uh, I want you to just think, and I want you to ask, answer out loud. I just want you to think, um, which is worse? Okay, which is worse? To make stuff up and live by it, or to believe that something is true and not live by it? So I just, I just don't, don't answer out loud. <laughs> what is worse? To make stuff up and live by it, or say something is true and not live by it. That's, that's a tough one, isn't it? Really, the answer is, is both of those are pretty bad, right? Saying what we believe and not living by it is an epidemic in the Christian church. It's an epidemic in the room. Okay? So I want us to understand that going in. And I, I, my goal is that we speak of truth and that we look at a religion and what that religion teaches. Uh, we are in no way uh, going to let this be a bashing it's not a, how can those people believe that? It's not going to be any of that kind of stuff. Everybody's faith, including traditional Judeo-Christian faith, has elements of crazy to it. Okay? There's just some crazy to every faith. 
And uh, if you don't think that, then you've never read the Old Testament. Because there's a lot of crazy in the Old Testament. A lot of crazy in the New Testament. So I just want you to keep that phrase in mind. Which is worse? To make something up and live by it, or believe in something and not live by it. And that just kind of covers everything and every place that we're at. So I've got some goals um, in covering uh, uh, the Mormon faith. Now, Cynthia's been asking for this for, what, six or seven months now? Uh, when, are we get, when, when are we getting to the Mormons, Marty? When are we getting to the Mormons? So we're to the Mormons, okay? Good. Uh, so I have, a couple of, I have a couple of goals in talking about this. Um, here's the first one. I want to establish, or I want to help establish, or maybe reestablish what your view of the Holy Bible is. A lot of times I use the word scripture, and when I use the word scripture, what I'm talking about is I'm talking about the Holy Bible. I'm talking about Genesis through Revelation, the Bible that is the basis of Christianity. So one of my goals in this is to help you have, discover, establish, or reestablish what your view of the Holy Bible is. Well, we talked about Sunday, if you, if you were at church on Sunday, we talked about how you know, the, the, your view of God. If I'm going to deal with temptation in my life, if I'm going to deal with evil in my life, one of the main questions I've got to ask is, what is my view of God? Do I see God as just a creator God, or do I, just, do I see God as, as my heavenly Father? So, who do I say that God is? Who do I say that Jesus is? These are incredibly important questions. The third question in that is, what do I say the Holy Bible is? Is the Holy Bible a collection of books that's got some ideas, that's got some principles? Is the, is the Bible the authoritative, inspired, written Word of God? This is key. It's not just key when you're discussing something like the Mormons. It's key in everything. So what is your view of the Bible? Is it the authoritative word of God? This is, this is a huge deal. So as we talk about that, I want you to be thinking about that. A second goal that I have is this. Is, is we're going to give some... A brief history of the Mormon faith. Where it started from, how it started, who started, and all those kind of things. And then we're going to spend most of our time comparing and contrasting Christianity and the Mormon church. Uh, our goal for the next two weeks is not to go in-depth into what the Mormon church teaches. That I don't know if that does any of us any good. But what can be helpful, what I think can be helpful is, okay, where is it similar where is the confusion coming from? How can a church that's called the, the Church of Jesus Christ not be associated with Jesus Christ? <laughs> uh, and so this is a confusing thing. And so we're going to spend our time talking about comparing and contrasting the two um, of, of where that goes. Uh, the other thing is, 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 is and we'll, we won't get that tonight, this won't be till next week, is I want to be able to give you some type of game plan uh, when you have the opportunity uh, to talk with a Mormon. Specifically, I want you to have a game plan when the bicycles roll up in the front of your house. Uh, what do you say? Or when the neighbor is Mormon, or your child comes home from school and their best friend is now a Mormon. Uh, what do you do then? And, and how do you have those kind of conversations? So we're, we're going to do, we're gonna do some of that as well. Um, and then... There's the big, big question. Um, do I, do you believe that Mormons are Christians? Again, I don't want to answer that out loud right now, but do I believe that Mormons are Christians? We're going to also look at it this way. Do the Mormons believe that I'm a Christian? Which I think is just as an equal important question. And, and we will be unpacking um, those things as we go. 
All right, so this is Jim, and I'm going to let Jim share with us a little bit about some history of the Mormon Church. This is the, I want this to be as much of a conversation as we can make it. So at any point in time, if you need clarif clarification, you have a question, you want to call a timeout, you want to talk about something, you want to correct one of us, you want to say, hey, that's not my experience, or you just, we have that freedom, okay? And uh, so, so we want to make sure that we're doing that as we go through the night. So Jim, why don't you tell us a little bit about the history All right. of the Mormon Church? Um, you'll have to excuse me if I start sneezing and sniffling. The allergies are bad this week, and I don't start my shots till tomorrow morning. <laughs> Bear with me. Well, let's let's start a little bit. This will be the uh, Reader's Digest condensed version, since we don't have a lot of time. But uh, Joseph Smith was the founder of the uh, Mormon faith, and he was born in 1805 in Sharon, Vermont. Now, he, he grew up in a very questionable household. Um, his mother was into um, witchcraft or uh, various, what did you, what did well, you call it? Well, uh, uh, tarot card oh, tarot reading, cards. witchcraft. Um, there was a name for it back then, and I can't exactly, it, but it's that... Uh, if you're thinking walking down the street, I've lived in New Orleans for a long time. There's lots of palm readers and lots of card readers and lots to sit down and tell your future kind of thing, that kind of stuff. So that was that was the world that his mom lived in, and then his dad lived and in. His dad was dad was a treasure seeker, and uh, they uh, they used various forms of witchcraft, uh, seer stones, which are magic, uh, supposedly magic rocks with holes in them that you would look through and something would appear on the other side or you would be able to, um, in this case, translate something. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, they would use those, they would use talisman and uh, divining rods to try to find this treasure. And uh, although it was illegal at the time, the family continued to, uh, to dwell in that. Uh, when he was uh, 18, or excuse me, 15, while playing in a wooded area, near his home. He said that God had a vision, told him his sins were forgiven, and that all, his, all the contemporary churches were corrupt and had turned against the gospel. And these two personages said they took a dim view of the Christian church along with the world at large, and they announced that a restoration of true Christianity was needed, and that he, Joseph Smith, had been chosen to lead this new dispensation. Three years later, again, when he was praying, uh, he was visited by the angel Moroni, who revealed the location of a buried book made of golden plates, as well as other artifacts, including a breastplate and a set of interpreters uh, composed of two seer stones. Eric, grab, grab some sheets there. Okay. Two seer stones in a frame. Okay, I want to stop you there. Okay. Okay, this, this is why, and I told you I'm going to be doing this a lot. Okay, I, I think it's incredibly important for you to understand uh, a big part of who you are comes from your parents. Now, you know this, right? You know the influence that your parents have on you, whether negative or positive. Some of us are saying, I'm living my life because I am going to do everything that I can to not be like my parents. Okay? Some of us are living our life in a way that we're saying, I'm doing everything that I can to be like my parents. And then there are those times as we get older, and for some of you that are not old enough to get older yet, you're going to have those moments when you say something to your kid, or you say something to somebody, and you're going to sit back and go, oh my gosh, I have turned into my father. Okay? Or that said, I, I made this mistake one time telling that to Lisa. Lisa, you sound just like your mom. That was a, that was a bad thing to say. Uh, but, it, but it was true, since she's in another building, I'll say it. It was true. And so here we have, we have Joseph Smith, who was raised in a very mystical uh, kind of thingy, okay, that's going on that's really hard to nail anything. His dad is a treasure seeker, and, and when we say treasure seeker, we're talking about he went around digging up hills looking for gold. Or golden in their heels. That's what he did. He was a treasure seeker. One of the big treasures he was looking for was the bounty of Captain Kidd. And that he was convinced that there was this huge gold. And so this is what his father's doing. 
Okay, so as Jim is talking about, these ain't according to the only person that's ever heard of Mar Angel, how you say it? Moroni. Moroni is, is who? Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith. Okay, so he so this is this is something that he's saying is real or made up or however we want to say that. Uh, but he is uh, he is saying that these angels are coming to him and, and talking about finding what? Treasure. Hidden golden treasure. We as we talked about Sunday, we have to connect the dots. Okay, this is incredibly important to correct the dots. Okay. Uh, the angel said these were hidden in a hill, and now it's called the Hill Cremora. You're probably familiar with that term. You've heard it here in town. Uh, Cremora credits and, and, and whatnot. The term is still being used. And uh, this was near his home in Palmyra, New York. So he took his last trip, his annual trip, to this hill uh, in, by September of 1827. He took his wife with him, and this time he retrieved these golden plates and put them in a locked chest. Um, he, he said that the angel had commanded him not to show the plates to anyone, but to publish their translation, and uh, reputed to be the religious record of indigenous, excuse me, of indi indigenous Americans. That's the Book of Mormon. And he translated the Book of Mormon from his golden plates because included with the golden plates was this giant pair of glasses, Glass, right? The seer, seer stones. Okay, that's... Mm -hmm. I'm from Mississippi, I don't know what seer stones are, but I do know what glasses are. Yeah. <laughs> he then moved to his, in with his father-in-law back in Harmony, Pennsylvania, and supposedly with divine help, he began to copy the characters off the plates, looking through these glasses, and translate them. And according to eyewitness accounts, Smith actually spent considerable time translating them with the seer, with the glasses, inside a hat. The translation was necessary because the text was written in Reformed Egyptian hieroglyphics. We can make a comment about that, but um, there has never been any evidence by any scholar of anything known to be reformed Egyptian hieroglyphics. Just a little side note. Then about a week later, on April 6th, 1830, the Church of Christ was officially organized with six members. The name was eventually changed to the Church of Christ of Latter-day Saints. And the membership increased rapidly, and a group of them moved to Kirkland, Ohio. Was there... Do we know where the, the word Mormon comes from? I don't know. Uh, Mormon was one of the guys, one of the um, angel Moroni. How do you spell that? M O R O N I. The angel Moroni told him about a man named Mormon, oh. and not Norman, but Mormon, who lived uh, fourteen hundred years earlier. Uh, And told him that it had been buried and stuff like that. So that's where the word Mormon comes from. And we're, when, when we, because a, a Mormon usually won't call themselves Mormon. They usually say they're Church of, uh, they're LDS or, or something like that. But that's that's where the, the typical thing of Mormon is. The other thing I want to, Jim showed you the Bible. I mean, there the Book of Mormon. This is also the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine of Covenants and the Pearl of Great Price, which Jim will talk about in a minute. This part is the Book of Mormon. So it's 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 not. It's not overly, it's not overly big, okay. Um, one of the things that we do know that, that they there's twenty five thousand in reference to his Egyptian, reformed Egyptian, right? Whatever that's called, no. right? Uh, there are at least twenty five thousand words in the Book of Mormon that are direct quotes from the King James Version. So we have to put those. We have to investigate that, and we have to put these things together. So if there's 25,000 words in the Book of Mormon that are directly plagiarized from the King James Version of the Bible, and the King James Version of the Bible wasn't around during the Egyptian hieroglyphic period. Okay? So, um, so there's just, there's that, there's that element. Okay. Well, they went to... 
uh, Kirkland, Ohio, and it was there they made the first printing of this new book. Uh, the Mormon Church then continued to move westward. They encountered a lot of persecution along the way. Battles were fought between Mormons and non-Mormons in far west Missouri. It was a town founded by the Mormons, and here Smith was imprisoned along with some other Mormon leaders. Then they escaped, and he and his followers moved to Illinois to a town that Smith named Nauvoo. This is where he organized a small army and gave himself the title of Lieutenant General. And during that time, the Mormons constructed a temple and were organizing the populace. Uh, then a local paper, the Nauvoo Expositor, began publishing anti-Mormon material. Uh, Smith ordered the pris prints, excuse me, the press destroyed, and every copy of the paper burned. This, this landed him in jail, and then he was released for a time, and then they re-imprisoned him, uh, and then he was taken to jail in Carthage, Illinois, along with his brother Hyman. In June of 1844, a mob of 200 people stormed the jail and shot and killed Joseph and Hiram Smith. Joseph did not die without a fight. According to the church's own account, he shot several of the mob members in the process. Uh, the Mormons, however, considered him a martyr, and uh, he still is to this, to this day. But after his death, uh, oh, excuse me, after his death, uh, I lost my place, I'm sorry. Um, Brigham Young, there we go. Brigham Young took his place as the president of the Mormon Church. Uh, Young led the, the group westward, and in uh, 1857 they arrived in Salt Lake City, where they are now, and that's where the, the headquarters is. And by the time of Brigham Young's death in 1880, 1877, they numbered about 150,000. Today it's about 15 million, about half of which live outside the United States. Okay. The, when Joseph Smith was, was shot and killed in jail, his family uh, did head, uh, started a, uh, some, some of the Mormons went with Joseph Smith's family, but the majority of them went with Brigham Young. And then Brigham Young uh, they got under so much pressure in Missouri, uh, mainly because of the polygamy thing, uh, that they were trying to escape, so they kept moving farther west. And so they initially ended up in Utah, because at the time they settled Utah, Utah was a part of Mexico, it was not part of the United States. And so that's why they kept going farther and farther west. Now, come say a little bit about Brigham Young. Um, I, don't, got, I don't have any yeah, here. Okay, I, okay. I, I, Kept it short. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I, because I think Brigham Young, uh, mainly because just because of the university and all of that kind of stuff. Even with our children, a lot of times with our kids, they, they may know BYU, Brigham Young University. They may not even know who Joseph Smith is, but they'll, they'll be um, familiar with that. Uh, Young, uh, where is that? There's so much we get piles of paper. Yeah, but basically, basically, young. He he takes them to. Um, this is not my right paper. Sorry, y'all. Hold on just a second. Young went on to have. I don't want to. I don't want to make it up. I know it was 57 children. Um. Yeah, but he had at least 17 wives. Uh, Brigham Young did. Uh, the thing where he ordered a... Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, here we go. So they end up in, uh, they end up in Utah. Uh, little, little known to most Mormons. Young was a rather rough and ruthless character. In 1857, he commanded Bishop John D. Lee to murder a wagon train of over 100 helpless non-Morgan immigrants. Uh, 20 years later, Lee was convicted and executed by the U.S. government. Young escaped punishment, and his role in the Mountain Meadows Massacre 
has escaped the Mormon history books. But that is part of history, and it's there, and it's happened. Uh, it, 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 that, that, you can't, they, they cannot escape that. But Young went on, he had, um, at the time of his death, in 1877, he, he had 17 wives and 56 children. Uh, from there, uh, the Mormon church um, develops and moves and goes to things like, like Jim was talking about. Okay? So what do we do now? Well, we can, we can go to these articles if you want, but just these three books, Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, and Pearl of Great Price. Again, the Book of Mormon was the account of the uh, indigenous Americans, and uh, supposedly Christ visited the continent twice to see the Indians. Um, the Pearl of Great Prize contains the Book of Moses, <laughs> which is roughly equivalent to the first six chapters of Genesis, uh, and the Book of Abraham, which is a translation of an Egyptian papyrus. Uh, Pearl of Great Pride, or Doctrine and Covenants, is a compilation of 103 early revelations to church leaders, including Joseph Smith. Okay. Any questions about the early history? Brent? So I'm curious, um, the tablets were uh, Egyptian hieroglyphs, Accounting, making an account of the Indian history. Did I have that right? So what? How, what? And the Jewish history, and that the American Indians were the were the missing tribe of Israel. Was the thirteenth missing tribe of Israel. Mm -hmm. So what happened to the plates? What happened to the plates? They got lost. The the All this is, is made up. What's made up? Joseph Smith made the whole thing. Well, you're not supposed to say that. You're not supposed to think that. But, oh, okay. You, you, all right, and you should have said in front of that, in my opinion. In my opinion. A little side note about the, the plates. Um, not sure where they were. Um, this is a little of an embarrassing fact. The gold plates, if you were actually to measure them and weigh them, they're about 200 pounds. And supposedly he was to pick them up and ran with them. Um, <laughs> they try to, to uh, somehow rationalize it, but there's all this air between the plates, and it's really not that big and that heavy. But it's one of those little nasty inconveniences. And here, here's 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 the deal, because if somebody were, to, if, if a non-believer, a non-Christian were to say, well, where are the Ten Commandments? Or the stones, or the tablets right. that was given to Moses. We don't have. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So so it's so it's similar. It's, oh, well, <laughs> in my opinion, in my belief, my belief, my belief is that that is not made up. But you could see that you have to understand the correlation. And and here and here's what we're doing. We're saying, okay, here's what's happened. Here's his background, which we know is history. That that part's not made up. This is who Joseph Smith was. This is who his family was. This is what he did. This is how he died. This is where Brigham Young came from. This is what he, according to him, he says, this is how we got the Book of Mormon. This is where it is. This they were gold tablets. They were this big, whatever. Like Jim said, you do some measures and realize, wow, that would weigh 200 pounds. <coughs> so how are you carrying and running out with 200 pounds of gold on your back? Okay. And so, not to mention how much money that would be worth. Okay. Uh, so you know. Somebody should be looking for those tablets because that's a lot of money just just there. And so when you start connecting the dots, remember it's again it's connecting dots. You got to lay it out. And when I talked about at the beginning, what's worse, following something that was made up, or believing something is true and not following it. And 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 so for many of us as Christians, we believe something is true, but we don't follow it. We don't follow the the Bible as the the authority of written. Word of God. We pick and choose, and oh, I don't want to have that. I don't want that. That that gets too personal. That gets too messy in my life. I'm going to ignore that part. I'm only going to take this. And when you start, when you start laying it all out and looking at all of it, there are just a lot of things that simply do not make, that do not line up. I'll go to Jack in the back, and then I'll come to you. Oh, this is going to sound like an odd question, but um, you mentioned that his parents were kind of into witchcraft or something of that nature. And I'm, I don't really know what um, the enemy is capable of, but is it possible for the en enemy to produce a doc, you know, some form of document, whether it's just leading? I don't know. Like I'm not. That's a, that is a great question. Um, 
that would be a matter um, that would be a matter of personal belief mm -hmm. and looking at what we again what we um, the, the Bible doesn't say that that is possible the Bible doesn't say that is not possible uh, what the Bible does says is that, the, that is that Satan is the prince of the power of the air it does say that the, the that Satan is an angel of light he is a deceiver uh, he's, he's, he's very good at deceiving so whether or not he could do all of that you know that that who knows i mean there's a lot of people who take a lot of things smoke some things and say they see things and so there's a lot of a lot of that can happen yeah. okay i had a question you know how moses had the ten commandments on those uh, his tablets um were they able to be read just off of the tablets or did he need to translate it through a hat <laughs> great point great point no i think it's pretty much written in the language that everybody can read and that there was no that there was no translation needed. Thank you. From uh, classes I've said it before, they pointed out that there's if you take the revelations that have been given to the elders of the Mormon Church, the later revelations seem to refute the earlier revelations. Yes. Yes, and and that that is very true, and we'll get to that in a in a bit. Okay. <laughs> Because one of the elements of the Mormon Church is uh, they they have a they they have they have the Book of Mormon and the Doctrine of Covenants and the Pearl of Great Price and I think there's another one they have a, I think there's four that they consider to be the word of the the word of God but they don't believe it to be complete that's that's why they don't take they believe that they believe in the Bible they're not anti Bible they're not saying the Bible's not true. They will say that the Bible is true only if it's corrected, if it's interpreted correctly. Uh, so they have an open, an open policy when it comes to revelation. So, uh, for instance, for a long time, if you were African American, you couldn't be in the Mormon Church. You certainly couldn't be a priest in the Mormon Church. And then in 1978, which is not that long ago, in 1978, the, the head of the Mormon Church spent all day in prayer and came out and said that all of that that's stated in the Book of Mormon and in our Pearl of Great Price and all that, that says that, that people of color are not allowed in the church. Well, that's not right. And we're changing that. If I can interrupt you uh, sure. in a minute when we talk about these articles. Oh, why, why are the blacks, why did they feel that way about the blacks? And we'll get to that. Okay. Woody? Tell them why in 1978. Uh, Historically, they were going to lose. They were going to lose their tax exempt status yes. as a church. Yes. And that guy happened to be the treasurer of the United States. Yes. Because they didn't want blacks to play. Yes. Yes. And they also changed the. They also changed the polygamy. Uh, in order to become a state. Because when they moved to Utah, it was Mexico, and then all of a sudden it wasn't Mexico anymore. And now it was going to become a part of the United States. And, and they, wanted, they wanted to be a state. They wanted to be a part of the United States. And they could not be a part of the United States uh, if they were going to have polygamy. So they went back to something that, and we, we have that. You can find it. You can look it up. It reads it. It says it stately. I mean, it says it plain. As, as plain as John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. In the Book of Mormon, it says you can have multiple wives, and this is a part of what we believe. And and you're, it is not committed; it is not considered adultery when you have multiple women. And da 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 da. It's there, but since they have an open version or an open uh, canon. Rev, a canon or an open revelation, they come back and refute. The number one reason that people leave the Mormon Church that are in the Mormon Church. Number one reason. The number one reason. Someone in the Mormon Church leaves the Mormon Church, which is incredibly hard to do, by the way. But the number one reason they do that is they discover the early teachings of the Mormon Church. When they start understanding, this is what Joe, who this is who Joseph Smith was. This is what he said. This is what the religion is based on. When they see who Brigham Young is, and they see what he was based on, and the things that he said, they they pull back and say, that is not something. I, and then you get into, oh. Well, we don't believe that anymore, so we just changed it. Oh, so now you're saying I'm going to be a part of a religion 
that changes whenever the wind blows in a different direction. Okay, so I got hands all over the place. Hold on, so I'm gonna go right back over here. Um, you had said uh, that Brigham Young had 17 wives and 56 children, but what about Joseph Smith? I, I do not know how many he had. He had a problem with that, and the problem he had with that was his wife. <laughs> <laughs> because his wife came out and said, I'm okay with you having multiple wives, I just want multiple husbands. Uh -huh. oh. So his, that's, I think that's something Joe was really wanting, <laughs> uh, but really never got around to having Brigham obviously uh, had a lot more game. So, yeah, you know, that's that kind of, so I got... Wait, like, I'm, I'm one ahead. comment here before you, one thing to remember about the Mormon church, they have their, their documents and their Bibles and whatnot. Um, however, the church authority over, uh, su or supersedes, even this. Yes. Um, that's why there's been so many thousands of changes in these over the years. So a new president comes along or a new um, uh, prophet and all of a sudden he makes a new announcement and we have a change. Uh, that's how this thing with the blacks happened and um, now they can drink Pepsi. Yeah, there's all, a lot of those things. Okay. I know it's easy for people outside of the group to kind of you know, say everyone is like this in this group. I mean, they do it to us. And so, with all these changes, are there different denominations in Mormonism? There's not different denominations, but there are different sects. And so, I guess that might be, we might say that we might use that as a different denomination. That there are still Mormons who practice polygamy, mm -hmm. and and state that, and that's what they are. But polygamy from the standpoint, I mean, sister wives. I mean, you see this show on A and I mean, it's there. And so that kind of stuff happens. Um, and then you, you, you've got, just like, just like in Christianity, you're going to have fundamental Christians. You've got that church in Kansas that makes every Christian look really bad um, with their poster boards and all of that. So you've got, you got people like that. Mormon church is going to be the same way. And, and this is important. You've got lots of people who go to Mormon church every week and have been raised in one, and they have no idea. Okay, if I were to ask you, how well versed are you in the Bible? My guess is, you don't want to take that test. Tell you what, let me make a test up this next week. I'll give it to y'all next week. Y'all want to tell who wants to take that test? Not many of you. A couple of you will take it. But the vast majority of you don't want to take that test. Okay? And the same thing is true in the Mormon church. you got a lot of people who are going to Mormon church. They go in. They've got their jobs. they got their kids. they got their friends. They're Mormons. Yeah, but they don't know. They don't know. They, they haven't studied it. They haven't looked at it. They haven't investigated it. They just... They, they are social Mormons. Right. Social Mormons, just like they're social Christians. Social uh, Catholics, practicing Catholics. There's all kinds of things that are going on with that. Okay? And I think that that's important. I think, you're, Jim, you describe Roman Catholics really well. Um, they don't all know the Bible. The church has changed. The rules have changed. You can't eat fish. You can't eat meat. You can't... Okay. So a lot of those... Happen, those kind of changes happen in other churches too. We are Christians, so we're sitting here laughing at some of the points that were made. If we were Mormons, we would be laughing at some of the points that were made. Oh, Christians absolutely. Made. So, absolutely. Uh, and if we were ancient Romans, if we were ancient Greeks, we would have our own faith system. Yes. So, well, you know, I read the Book of Mormon because I was in a hotel every week for work. <laughs> <laughs> I, did. I actually dug out. Uh, yeah, Marriott. Well, okay. Okay. <laughs> because I copied out part of the introduction, which you probably, it was smaller than that, so probably just for the Book of Mormon. So just the beginning, it says, we invite all men everywhere to read the Book of Mormon, to ponder in their hearts the message it contains, and then to ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ, if the book is true. Those who pursue this course and ask in faith, We'll gain testimony of its truth and divinity, blah, blah, blah. It's all based on faith. Every religion is based on faith. Right. Absolutely. Well, but that's it. If you have faith in this, you have to But, what, but here's the difference. We need to, when we start into this, what you what you read sounded very, very Christian. But we'll dive into these various characters, their God, their Jesus, their Holy Spirit here in a minute, and you'll see that it's it's not based on biblical. I started truth. with it. I started with this. Is it better? Is it, which is worse? To make something up 
and follow it or to say something's true and not follow it. Okay. Okay. They don't and say it doesn't have to be based on the Bible. I mean, Jupiter was a god, Neptune was a god. They're not based on the Bible. Those people believe that those were their gods. Of course. But we believe in our hearts. Yes. Who are yes, the yes, Lord yes, yes, yes. 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 And here's what, and here's what I want to make sure that we don't go. We're going to spend our time comparing and contrasting what the Mormon Church believes and how they want to practice it as a Christian. As a follower of Jesus Christ, as a representative of what I believe to be the truth that is presented in God's written word. What a Buddhist believes, Tom Cruise can be as whacked out Scientology as he wants. That is his choice. And I laugh at his souls in a pod popping in the ocean. He laughs at, at Moses' part in the Red Sea. Okay, That's not what this is about. To me, what makes the Mormon faith so incredibly dangerous... Now I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Mm -hmm. The reason that it makes it so incredibly dangerous is because it claims to be Christian. Mm -hmm. And when you claim to be something and you are not, you deceive. Mm -hmm. Scientology does not claim to be Christian. A Buddhist does not claim to be Christian. A, 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 a Jew does not claim to be Christian. A Catholic doesn't claim to be Baptist. And if Catholics started claiming to be Baptist, I would have to stand up and talk about that. <laughs> because a Catholic is not a Baptist. And a Baptist is not a Catholic. And so that's the whole purpose of doing this. Not to put down somebody's faith. We all believe in something crazy. Teenage girl gets pregnant. Has Jesus. No sin. I mean, it's crazy. It is, a, it, it is based on faith. But the real rub is when someone says there's something when they're not. And that, that's the rub. That, that's what separates it out. Absolutely, they, but even the ones, many of them haven't studied it, many of them have, and if they've studied it and they say, yeah, I believe this and I take it, that's fine. That, take it, but we just got to make sure, you know, again, I love this, it's from Dr. Phil, but here's the deal. What are you basing it on? What are you basing it on? Whatever you believe, what are you basing it on? And a Mormon is basing their faith on one guy who wrote one book with 200 pound gold plates in the woods with special glasses. Looking into a hat. And looking into a hat. Okay, <laughs> that's what it's based on. And, and, and people will look at me and say, Marty, you believe in the Bible and you believe the Old Testament is true and you believe this and you believe that Jesus actually talked to Satan. Yes, I do. And the reason I can go back to 5,500 transcripts, full, complete Hebrew, uh, Greek transcripts of the New Testament, and they all say the same thing. And you look at the Bible written, 44 authors over 1,500 years. I mean, when you start, when you start comparing the two, there is no comparison. I'm on your side. I know you're on. I know. I know. I know. But 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 a lot of uh, it's easy to get it twisted. It's so easy to get it twisted, especially when we're talking about our neighbors, people in our family. Uh, we're talking about good people. And we're talking about people that we like and people that we work with, work for, work under, work for us. These are the, this, is who, this is who we're talking about. Um, and so, it, you know, chances are you're not going to ever allow a voodoo witch doctor to come into your and sit at your kitchen table and do a monkey sacrifice and pray for your family. I'm just guessing nobody in the room is going to allow that in their house. But many, many good meaning Christians allow something that is not Christian to come sit in their house because they're nice. I'm going to say something, but we're filming, so I'm not going to say it. Because they're nice people. And this is this is why this is a fight, and we've got to be we've got to be willing to fight it, because it it does not represent the truth. It represents the worst kind of truth, truth that seems to be true, and that's the worst kind, absolutely the worst kind. Somebody I saw a hand over here. Wait a minute. Kind of going back to Jackie's comment. 
she said, uh, couldn't the um, enemy do that sort of thing? In my opinion, based upon the truth of God's word, in 1 John we're told that everyone lies in the hands of the enemy. So I would have to say to her, absolutely, because apart from Christ, you lie in the hands of the enemy regardless of your so-called faith. Um, and also, I would just challenge you, Marty, on the good people. Jesus said no one is good. Well, So true. nice is probably a better word. Nice people. <laughs> yes. I have a question. Nice people. Does, do people need Satan to write something that's not correct? Yeah, or a lie? No, do it on but I would. I mean, when you start talking about something this detailed, um, it seems like twenty-five thousand words of it came from the King James Bible. But um, yeah, it's, it's, this would be tough. And I think that's part of that's that's again that's part of the lure. How does how, that's one of the reasons why when you read something in the book, when you read something in the book, you have the tendency to do what? Believe, believe that it's true. And you know why that is? You know why psychologists tell us that is? Because you know you can't write a book. And if somebody can write a book, that means they're what? Smarter than I am. And if they're smarter than I am, they must have this figured out. So if I read this in a book, now some of us, I know somebody's shaking their hand. You've gotten older, but not all of us are on the other side of 50. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so we're still learning. Just because it's in a book doesn't mean it's true. But when we read something, we read what we look like it's something like the average person sits down and says, okay, you know, where do you think this came from? You think God gave this to him? Well, yeah, yeah, obviously he did. It's written in King's English. I can't even understand it. So obviously it came from something. And and eighty percent of the people in the United States of America believe in God, eighty to ninety percent, only thirty to forty percent believe in the devil. So when you ask that question, Jackie, to the if, if we represent the general and we don't, but if we represented the general population of the United States, that then I don't know how many have sixty people in the room, then there would be twenty five people in the room don't even believe that Satan exists. So how in the world could Satan give this to him? Because there's the Satan doesn't even exist. And so these are these are some of the things that we that we have to, to, to understand. So when you have your belief system, whatever your belief system is, you have to ask this question, what are what is it based on? And I'm always going to go back to who do you say God is? Who do you say Jesus is? And what do you say the Bible is? Because everything is going to come down to those three things. When somebody tells me, I don't believe that God is Heavenly Father God, He's just Creator God, then I know this is a short conversation. If somebody says, I don't believe Jesus is divine. I do not believe that Jesus is God. And if you do not believe that Jesus is God, you are not a Christian. Not according to Scripture. Not according to the Holy Bible. Because that's what it says over and over and over. And, and, and if you don't believe the Bible is the authoritative, inspired, written Word of God, okay. I'm okay with that. I just don't know what you're basing your faith on. There. Because if you don't believe that, then your faith is based on what? Your feelings, your experiences, and whatever proper culture is telling you. And, and that's the bottom. And when you, when you in, in defense of people who believe the Mormon faith, when you put all of your eggs in a sacred text, regardless of what sacred text it is, you are not seen as competent by the general public. Y'all catch that? Y'all get that? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Well, the Bible's a sacred text, so I don't understand. If you are going to live your life according to what Scripture says in every aspect, the general public will not see you as competent. Doesn't matter what the book is. 
get your set and we're not we're set apart we're holy we're peculiar i mean that's the word peculiar if you're a christian and you're following what the bible says you are peculiar Jackie? but even there you can you know there's people who aren't necessarily christians but believe in the bible or not believe in the bible but believe that some of the things of the bible are true just because of so many eyewitness accounts and so many different documents you know, even there, I would say there's a distinction because this is just, like you said before, this is just one person. There isn't any other evidence besides that one person where even, you know, some people will use the Bible as a historical document even though they're not a practicing Christian. Absolutely. Well said. I hope everybody could hear what she said because that's, the, that's our point of starting with the history. We wanted you to know where his family came from. You want to know what he was used to, and this is what he said, and, and, and this is not written by 44 people over 1,500 years. That is not the case. There are not 5,500 manuscripts that are, that are within 50 years of when this happened. This is one man in the woods coming out with 200 pounds worth of gold that nobody could find. And what I know about Mormons, because they're very savvy business people, they're very wealthy, they do it. They can lose 200 pounds of gold. <laughs> and so you just have to start putting those things together and when you start connecting those dots you're going to have to yeah it is is christianity based on faith absolutely is the bible the word of god based on faith absolutely and there's all kind of translation things that are going on in the bible but there is a lot of evidence to show what the, that the bible is what it says um and believe it or not, one of the biggest benefits that the Bible has is that there are that not errors of truth, but there are errors in the Bible. It's, it's not laid out. Every, the, the, the resurrection account and the Gospels don't match. They're, all, they're different. We're doing the temptations of Jesus, right? We're in Luke chapter 4. If you go in Matthew, guess what the temptations of Jesus? Are they in the same order? No. They're not in the same order. So, to me, that lends credibility. Okay? Uh, when one person writes it, one person forgets, oh, here's the measurements. Oh, I forgot that that would weigh 200 pounds. See how that works? You know how that is. You know how it is when you tell a lie. You forgot the parts that you didn't, and then you get, oh, and you got to do something else, and you got to do something. All right, Grant. So, along the connected dot line, um, Two questions. What what, what does uh, the Mormons? What, what do they believe? What, who the author was of these uh, plates? That's one question. And second, if they claim that there was these revelations in there about Christ making Himself known and appearing to the uh, Native American Indians, what what dot do they connect as to the historical account of that? Uh, in any record or history or otherwise uh, having to do with the Indians? Okay, I want Jim to I answer. Can, I want him to answer that. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, good. They believe that the Book of Mormon and these other scriptures uh, from Joseph Smith are inspired by God. So they see that as sacred text. Um, there's a sheet floating around here and there's more on the table. Uh, there is no archaeological archeolo evidence to support any of this. Zero. Um, Zero. Now they will try to tell you otherwise, but um, if you look on that sheet, it breaks it down. No evidence for this, no evidence for that. And at some point, you have to say, okay, Bible, all this archaeology that gets dug up, we see here all the time, it goes back and it, it continues to confirm what's in the Bible. You think over a period of time, particularly these battles that the Indians had, um, that's part of the story, there would be some evidence of all of this in these hills, supposedly where this took place. Zero. So like Marty says, it has, your, faith is, your faith can be based on something, but if it's going to be true, it should be based on evidence. Um, here, here's, uh, I love this statement. Um, you can believe whatever you want to believe. Right? You can believe whatever you want to believe about whatever you want to believe. Okay? But you can't believe whatever you want to believe and be logical at the same time. Okay? You're you cannot here. believe that there's no gravity. I mean, you can believe there's no gravity. But you can't, you can't say that there's 
gravity and no gravity at the same time. So it has to be logical. And, and so that's it. We have 13 things that we wanted to cover tonight, and we need to at least cover Maybe one. We can, can we cover one? one? But, Martin, but what Martin was saying, right you're, after you're Roger's entitled, question. Okay, you're entitled to your opinion, but you're not entitled to your own facts. The <laughs> <laughs> you are entitled to your own opinion, but not your own facts. That's right. I have never read anything about Joseph Smith, but I'm assuming here's something. People that have personality disorders because of family structure they came from, or something traumatic that's happened in their life, like PTSD, will create situations that they feel as if they have control over their lives in, and they feel normal. Do you think something like that could exist? That, it's possible. Uh, that is a possibility with his life and some of the history. Yes. That he did have mental illness, they call it. Well, well, I'm not going to let us get to even number one. What happened to his father, the, the, the treasure hunter, and his mother, who was his, had her own secret stones, if they saw the, through their secret stone, they saw that gold, maybe dad had it. Well, either that or there was no plates. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's try to cover the one, right, the first let's, one. Let's go to these articles of faith, all right? Now, if you look at these, they sound very Christian. Um, let's take the first one. We believe in God, the Eternal Father, and as His Son, Jesus Christ, and in hope and the Holy Ghost. Let's take the first one. Most of us have a picture of who God is. Well, the Mormon God, Elohim, is the name they give him, is the God of this planet. Okay? Not the universe. This planet. Yes. Planet Earth. And he is an exalted man with a body of flesh and bones. So that's God, the eternal Father. That's, yes. Yes. Where is that dude? Huh? Where is that dude hanging out? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right, see, now, you're, now you're starting to get the picture. All right. So hold on. Here. All right. It gets better. He impregnated Mary by having sexual intercourse with her after making her his first wife, even though she was already not only his daughter, uh, one of his spirit children, but also betrothed of Joseph. Now, a modern-day Mormon will refute that. Mm. They will not say that that is true. What do they say is true? Now they kind of gloss over it. Yeah, they don't. They but don't. you can but read... written in the book? You have direct quotes yes. from Joseph Smith, from the teachings of the prophets of Joseph Smith, of these things, yes. And uh, okay. he says, There is an infinite number of holy personages drawn from worlds without number who have passed on to exaltation and are thus gods. So part of the Mormon theology is that you progress on to be your own God. Mm -hmm. And uh, God, Elohim, is just one of those. Now... So to clarify, you become your own God of your own planet. Yes, you can have your own planet. Oh. Well, but even before, even if let's back up into that, because that gets into the, to, to the deeper thing, on a more simplistic, in a more simplistic manner, uh, Christianity is based on one God, period. One God, period. As a monotheistic belief, there's one God. Mormons are not monotheistic. They're polytheistic. They believe in many gods. They believe in multiple gods. They believe in gods of councils. They, they do not believe in the Trinity. They believe that God the Father... And God, and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit are three distinct individuals. They're not, they're not one and the same. So you can read something like, like Jim's talking about, we believe in God, the Eternal Father, and in His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. When you read that as a Christian, you're going like, well, of course, that's just, that all sounds great. But you have to, you, again, you have to ask the question, okay, what is your view of God? Who do you view God in? It's like Jim said, they view God as a flesh and blood, spirit being. What's the, what's the quote about the once was a man? And, oh, um. The Muslims and the Buddhists must love the Mormons because it's all man-based. God himself was once as we are now and is an exalted man. That's from the teachings of Prophet Joseph Smith. 
So that's not in the Book of Mormon, that's in the Doctrine? Yeah, with some of his teachings. That's the other, one of the other books is the um, compilations of his uh, quotes. And who created the universe? The Council of Gods. Well, let's talk about the Council of Gods real quick. Um, there is a group of, of gods, and they, it's, it's what took place in the pre-mortal existence. Uh, there was a war in heaven. Let's jump to that for a second here. A war in heaven uh, that took place between the spirit children of God. It was primarily over how and in what manner the plan of salvation would be administered to the forthcoming human family upon the earth. This involves such thing as agency, how to gain salvation, and, and who should be the redeemer. So this war broke out, in a nutshell. Uh, Jesus presented his plan. Um, Lucifer, who is his brother in Mormon theology, um, they both submitted their ideas to the council. Satan's, uh, Lucifer's, excuse me, was rejected. As a result, he rebelled and was thrown from heaven. And he took uh, a lot of the spirits with him. So it's similar to uh, the story in the Bible, but um, Lucifer and his followers wanted salvation to come automatically to all who pass through mortality without regard to individual preference, agency, or voluntary dedication. And if we go back to this situation with the blacks, in, in the book of uh, Moses, which is in here, records the fact that Cain was the first murderer, and he was the father of the Negro race, his black skin being the result of a curse by God. On this basis, the Mormons avoided and ignored blacks for years in their missionary work, believing that pre-existent souls that were considered less than valiant in the war in heaven between Christ and Satan were punished by being assigned assigned black bodies during their mortality. Um, I mean, here, to, so, here, to me, It doesn't fit if you say that. I mean, Cain came after Adam and Eve, who were the first. So how did Cain get the mark if he wasn't born yet? These, in Mormon theology, every one of us was alive in the pre-existent. Pre 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 so pre you were in the pre-existent, the pre-mortal state. Mm -hmm. Then you came to Earth, and now you have this temporary body. Yeah, let, let me read this because we've got to go. Gotta go. Gotta go. Um, we'll hang around and ask questions if you want and we'll try to be a little bit more concise next week as we compare the difference between Christianity and Mormons. But here's what Mormon theology teaches that God is one of countless gods. That he used to be a man on another planet. That he became God by following the laws and ordinances of that God on, uh, on that world and that he brought one of his wives to this world with whom he produced spirit children who then inhabited human bodies at birth. Now that is the thing that they're saying. That if you will, if you will follow the Mormon teaching of the Mormon church and you will do everything right, you will do all of this, then as a, as a man, one day you're going to get your planet and you'll get to bring one of your wives with you and you make spirit children and you become the God. As, as, oh. as man is, God once was. That's what, that's what they're saying. Um... Do you like the virgin again when you get there? <laughs> well, I don't know about that part. Um, the first spirit child to be born was Jesus. Second, though this is disputed among Mormons, was Satan. And then we all followed. Uh, and so, so that's the basis, some of the basis of it. So, and and y'all know this about me. I'm a simple guy, so I'm a simple-minded person. So when you start telling me, when you, when, I don't really have to investigate a whole lot about the Mormon faith when you tell me there's more than one God. Mm -hmm. The moment you tell me there's more than one God, okay, and that God used to be a man and, and worked his way up to being a God, and then that we're, we're results of that, that it, it, it's, it's kind of like, here Marty, would you like this glass of Coke? There's only one drop of poison in it. <laughs> okay? I'm not drinking the Coke, right? Even though it's just got one drop of poison in it. You put one drop of poison in it, and I'm not drinking the Coke. So when you say, 
Here's what I believe. I believe that there's lots and lots and multiple gods. At that moment, I have checked out of whatever else you have to say. Now we're going to talk about some other things as it relates to who they say Jesus is, who they, how they say, uh, self, how you acquire salvation, what good deeds are. Now a lot of that will make sense, especially when we start talking about what good deeds are. And you can see how that goes, okay? you got like four minutes to get your kids out of Run Plus Fun if you've got kids, okay? Um, we'll hang around and uh, I'm going to say a prayer even as people are moving out to go get their kids, okay? Father God, help us to see you as Father. Help us to understand. Um, help us to have grace-filled hearts. Give us wisdom. Protect us from the evil one in any way that he wants to distort uh, your truth. May you give us all great nights. Uh, for the rest of this evening. In your name we pray. Amen.